Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Sucre with the Arizona Trauma Association, and this is Trauma in a Flash. The Massive Transfusion Protocol, also known as MTP, is one of the most important advances made in trauma care over the last 15 years. It encompasses the concept of hemostatic resuscitation for those patients in hemorrhagic shock with acute traumatic coagulopathy. Massive blood transfusion is defined as a need to transfuse at least 10 units of packed red blood cells over a 24-hour period, or the need to transfuse more than four units of packed red cells in the first hour with the anticipation that ongoing transfusions will still be required. Of note, FFP, or plasma, and platelet transfusions are not calculated in the total. Researchers have made strides in further understanding the concepts of trauma-induced coagulopathy prompting the implementation of protocols that institute early initiation of blood, plasma, and platelets in an effort to provide for hemostatic resuscitation. Although massive transfusion protocols have become standard throughout the trauma world, the ratio of packed red blood cells to plasma and platelets vary between institutions as our understanding of hemorrhagic shock physiology continues to evolve. Determining the need to initiate the massive transfusion protocol is not always an easy one, the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma recommends utilizing the Assessment of Blood Consumption, or ABC score, as an aid to trigger an MTP. The ABC score is well validated and is 75 to 90 percent sensitive and specific. However, it can overestimate the need for activation of the MTP protocol by 45 to 55 percent. On the flip side, its negative predictive value is very good at less than 5 percent. The ABC score consists of four variables, pulse greater than 120, systolic blood pressure less than 90, a positive fast, and penetrating torso injury. Each variable is assigned one point. A score of two or more warrants an MTP activation. Our understanding of the physiology of hemorrhagic shock and optimal resuscitation continues to evolve. There is ongoing research in exciting areas such as evaluating the risks and benefits of pre-hospital blood and plasma administration. More recently, with the experience gained in Afghanistan and Iraq, a handful of trauma programs have instituted massive transfusion protocols that utilize whole blood transfusion instead of component therapy. Fresh whole blood transfusion may have more effectiveness than the sum of its parts. This is at least partially related to the changes that occur in packed red blood cells, platelets, and in plasma components during their storage. This includes time-sensitive degradation of red blood cells and platelets, decreased 2,3 DPG activity, as well as decreased factor activity. More research will need to be done to prove the effectiveness in whole blood resuscitation over that of component therapy. But I am optimistic that whole blood transfusion programs will grow across the nation and provide further improvement in saving lives from hemorrhagic shock. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Trauma in a Flash. <laughs>